Hey, welcome everyone. Okay. Um, I'll, oh. All right. Sorry. I just got distracted there for a second. No surprise. Uh, let's go ahead. We got a pre submitted question. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Will Pedersen. Um, and I work at Decisions. Thanks for everyone that came out to Decisions Days last week. It was great to see everyone in person. Um, for those of you that were able to join, we have a pre submitted question here. In version 7.4, if you give the autocomplete text box a list of names, it is only searchable by the first name. Is it possible to set up search by last name as well? Interesting. If you give it a list of names, okay. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a place to set up here. Auto search. Wow, okay. Allow you to talk, Janice, if you have any questions. Let's just get our stuff set up here. And Amber, are you taking the questions down for us? Yeah. All right, wonderful. I'm gonna paste this into the chat for us. How's everything going, Janice? Are you uh, building a bunch of stuff? Yep, I keep getting new requirements every day, so. <laughs> That's why you see me. I know you see me a lot in here. Yeah. No. Good. I'm glad that hopefully these are being helpful. So you don't have they're not stuck out on an island trying to figure it all out on your own. All right. So let's create a new forum here. Let's search auto complete search box. Put a button. All right. So auto complete search box. List items, data name is going to be accounts. Mm. So can you only pass strings into the autocomplete text box? I haven't used this in a long time. Let's see. What does it expect? It expects strings. Oh, okay. It does only expect strings. Interesting. So selected accounts, accounts. So it's a list of strings. So this is probably not going to do what you want. Let's just fetch accounts here. I think we're going to have to do this in a different way that will get you what you want, but is it a little bit more, um, probably a little bit more work. So we're going to fetch accounts. We're going to pass email address from entity results. So this will be all email address. And we will ignore the selected one. So if we run this, there's a text box. And if I search admin, it'll give me that. Um, the thing is, it's only a, a string. That's kind of a, am I missing a setting on that text box or is autocomplete text box really just a text box? I guess it is. It does say text box, doesn't it? So yeah, I'm not. I'm not certain. Will 
I haven't I think used this it in Photo just, before. I think it is just strings. Okay, so here's what I would do. We're going to do this a different way. We are going to use, we're going to do what you want, but we're going to use a drop down list here who we can set the type on. So the type will be account. And display, fail, display field will be email address. And the list input source will be uh, a flow. So this is a special type of input we get for a drop-down list. You have static, data name, or flow. So I'm going to pick flow. And here I'll say selected account is the selected item. And I'm going to build a flow to run this. So I'm going to, I'm going to create a flow here. Pick or create flow, create new flow. This will be called uh, drop down list searcher. And what I'm going to do is pass in a single string here, which will be called search string. And then what I'm going to do is put a fetch entity step. Now I'm going to have to go create some first and last name values just to make this work. But I'm going to find an account. I'm going to fetch accounts. And what I'm going to do is deselect combined filters using and. And I'm going to come to fetch criteria and I'm going to find first name uh, contains. And then I'm going to come here again and find last name contains. So I have what I've done by deselecting and it'll find results that match either of these. And I'm going to pass if, if I go to my item mapping editor here. I'm going to pass search string into both of these. Oh, man. For those of you that haven't seen this yet, uh, in version 7.7, the data mapper has been redone, and it is much improved over what it was in earlier versions. So this, what you can see is it highlights as well, which is a big thing. So uh, when, you select, when you highlight on the left, it'll highlight on the right where you've mapped to. So you don't have to follow the, um, the actual mapping strings themselves. So big shout out to the product team for improving that. And then results. Go ahead. Someone saying something? No, I was just saying, yeah, that's awesome. Isn't it? We'll call this output. It'll be type account. It will be a list. We'll save this. And we will pass the any results that are returned here. All right. So we'll save this. And what we're going to do is it's already doing it already edit, it already created for me flow input data so it what happens is when i use a flow as a drop down list input that has input data it'll show up here under this flow input data and if i edit this i can change the trigger i can say it gets it from a form control it is an input or it's typed text so it's going to run every time i type my text so i'm going to go ahead and click okay let me go ahead and save and close this and then i'm going to open up a new tab and I'm going to go add some first names and last names. So system security accounts. I'll find my account. And I'll find first name is Will. Last name is Pedersen. And I'll create a new account. Shout out to my sister. So her first name oops, will be Megan. And last name, Pedersen. So if I come back here and I debug, I should have nothing. And if I search Pedersen, I get nothing. Okay. If I search Will, I get that. If I search Megan, I get that. Did I, let me double check my mappings here. Auto search box, DDL searcher. Oh. Weird. Okay. Maybe I didn't save that. So search string. Search string. Save this. New debugger. There's that. Okay. Let's create a unit test here. Figure out what's this, why this isn't working. If anyone knows that I've done something wrong, speak now or 
forever hold your peace. So results, create a new, let's create one here. So create a new unit test, if Pedersen. Oh, sorry, that's the value. Okay, so if I do last name, it sends results out. I should, if I look at any results, I have two items. So what's not working here? It's only doing the first one. Let's see, form. Now this isn't actually showing my flow run, is it? What's wrong here? Selected accounts. Let's do, maybe there's an error here. This thing is called accounts. Let's get rid of this. Okay, it's shown both Will and Megan. It should be showing all accounts, shouldn't it? Combine filters using and is false. Search string into both, so it should be doing an or. I mean, get rid of first name contains. I'll try this again. I shouldn't. Okay, I'm missing something here. Anyone have any ideas what I'm missing here? No, sir, drawing a blank. Fortunately, right. the same. Oh, flow output data name. Am I not? That shouldn't matter. Edit flow. All right. The name is output. Flow output name. I know we can do this. I know we can do this. The question is, is the fetch entity step going to let us do this? struggling, I think, with the fetch entity step right now. Okay, it's coming in null. Which is still returning results. It's interesting. It's a fetch deleted combine using and. I'm gonna select this on.
What if typed in text is not working in the build right now? Search, flow input, typed in text. Let's try this. Form input will be name. Yes. Yeah, okay, so empty. So that's going to say that it couldn't hit the no results path on fetch entities. Okay. Edit this. Type text. Save this, run this. Now, does that throw an error? Error running step 1217, that's us right now. No result path for outcome, no results. Okay. If I run this again, eighteen ten, it fails. So it actually runs, it just won't return any results when I search by the last name. Yeah, so it gets no. I don't think this is working like it's supposed to. I think this is, a, I think I'm hitting a bug here. Uh, Janice, but this is, um, this is how you would do it. Let me circle back with you and figure out but what I have. If I just kind of walk back through what I did there is there's a drop down list whose list input source is flow with an input, which typed in text. And that'll actually run and pass the string into the, the flow. For, like you can do like partial searches using this method um, instead of loading up everything into a data into a drop down list for actual searching um, you can do the whole um, you, you could actually make like database calls so what we've seen in the past these things pattern is someone has a big set of users and they don't want to fetch all the users and pass them to the drop down list so they use this pattern and um, they'll institute like a like a minimum three character type rule. So in this flow, what they would do is have like a string length type check to see if it's more than, because they don't want to search on one character because they know they'll get tons of results. And if there's, if it's not three characters, they'll go to the end. But if it passes that check, then they'll actually run their, their database fetch of some sort. So I owe you an answer on what's, why this isn't working. Um, but uh, this would be the pattern you would use here. So we can um, we can follow up with you and get, get you an answer on that. Okay.
Who else has got questions? You guys can. Uh, yeah, Amber, I tried it on both uh, contains and equals. Thing. Good, good, good note. I tried it on both. Okay, anybody got any questions today? Sorry, that took a long time and was, maybe I should keep Sabrina around. So it's a bad, it's a bad omen. Who else has got questions today? We've got a little bit of a light attendance today with it being, I guess, Columbus Day and a, and a bank holiday. Nothing from the from the audience today. No questions of any sort. Everyone's just waiting for Morgan's day. Okay. Well, if that's everything, and no one has any other questions, I think we'll go ahead and just uh, call it a day. Oh, yeah. There you go, dude. Sure. Uh, cast object to type step. Let me see if I can't find that in our system really quick. Do you happen to know the ticket number? Oops, I just sent that to you, Amber. I wanted to send that to everyone. Happen to, David, do you happen to know the ticket number? Feature request, error on install, start flow with data, 10 mail to link for feature request. I'm going to remove and I'll set, set you, oh, I didn't. Hey, David, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, what do you have that? Do you actually have the ticket number by, by chance? Yeah, let me look it up real quick. I think I have it in my inbox here. And I mean, I don't want to waste y'all's time, but, um, you know, we submitted a ticket on it. And I was just curious um, mm -hmm. if there's any kind of trick to it, I guess. Um, let me see. Uh, I think it was, I think it was the one to start flow with data. Um, okay. Let me look at this really quick. We have a flow where we are trying to start a flow to start using save data using the start flow with data step. We had it working at one point, but it seems it's broken. Okay. Yeah. And I think so in order to, so we have that, uh, we basically built something in, I, I guess, a, uh, a form or a UI using, uh, sorry if this is long story long, but using a, a mixed type repeater to where we, okay. we, we make a, a user control and then a specific data type that's kind of tied to that user control. Okay. And, and we're telling that mixed type repeater, basically go look in this, go look in this place to know what to pull back so okay. that they have a drop down. Uh, the user has a drop down and, and it puts a list of of flows in there. And when they pick okay. one, it will go and look and then return the input parameters for that particular flow. Okay. And using that mixed type repeater, it can, it can be variable, right? Sure. So yeah, one sure. Flow has one, another has another. So we, they pick, they define then the input parameters for that flow. And then we're saving it off as, I forget what it is. I think it's a, 
it's a specific kind of thing, like a data pair, I believe. Okay. Yeah, sure. And so then later on when something like, let's say an invoice, for example, comes in, we're saying run this flow using these saved defined right. parameters against this particular thing to evaluate mm -hmm. whether it's true or false or not. Right. And, but we were using that start flow with data step, mm -hmm. saving our, our, our data pairs there. Okay. And we seem to, I guess, run into a little bit of a snag. It kind of, I guess, maybe ha had a, a, an issue when they would save a complex type in that data pair, right? So we're not always saving just strings. We may be saving an, like an object in there, right? Like, a, okay. and so we were trying to debug it and we were trying, the, the input of the thing is of a, that data type that's tied to that user control. So we were trying to say, okay, mm -hmm. well, if I need to debug this, I need to take this in and basically give it that object and we were trying to use that cast to object step. And we, it was kind of, I don't know, finicky, I guess, for lack of a better term. So I was just curious if, if maybe you could elaborate Ooh, on that. That's a big one. All right. So you cast start flow with data. That's integration, internal services somewhere, right? Right. Probably flow execution service. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Start flow. This is interesting that you guys are using this pattern. We're seeing this type of pattern more and more where you want to create like a UI for your users to yeah. complete, to be able to dynamically do things without touching the flow designer ever. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening because we basically want like, from our perspective, we want to build this in a generic way and mm -hmm. give them uh, just a, I guess a, a drop in UI and then have it connect to our basically external database to be able to, because every client's database is going to be different, right? Right, so yeah. We want it to ping their data and bring it back and have them do it to where then we can basically distribute this to multiple clients, but it's configurable enough to where we don't have to go customizing things, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I see start flow with data, takes a list of data pairs and a flow ID in. So let me create a flow. So where do you get the... Where do you fetch the data for the input data for the flow from? Yeah. So whenever they, uh, let's say from that UI, from that mixed type repeater, they, they, they save, they pick those parameters and they save it off. We're saving that into a, uh, into a table. Okay. Or a, a data structure, I guess. Um, and we're saving those things as data pairs. Okay. So the, uh, let's just so when it, yeah so when they when they pick their drop down list of a flow they pick the parameters we're saving off the flow id and the input parameters as data pair okay if that makes any sense how do you how are the inputs getting applied to the flow itself how do like so the flow needs some definition for its inputs right yeah yeah so when we when we save it off to that data structure we we, mm -hmm. make, we, br we bring it back based on uh, the flow ID. So for however many rules they or flows that they save off with different parameters, we just loop over those to grab the record. Mm -hmm. And then we're bringing in the flow ID and the data pairs for those inputs that we saved off into that table into the start flow step. Okay. To be able to process whatever logic is in that flow and then out, just output a, a true or false response. Okay. And it's when on the mixed type repeater, it's when they select types. Uh, so that part seems to be working just fine. Like we can pass in a list of, of complex types and we can save them off as the data pair. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever, whenever it comes into the, the start flow, uh, I think we ran into kind of a, a thing with, with it wanting to bring that back, right? Because it's almost like, since I'm creating a, a specific data structure to go along with each different user control, mm -hmm. uh, like that, I guess that object has a shape, right? And then mm -hmm. inside that, I, I say, okay, well, here's basically the input parameters of the, of the flow that I need, and I'm saving that. Well, one of mm -hmm. those input parameters is, is probably a, a complex type, right? So when I 
when I bring it back and I want to execute that start flow with data step, it's almost like it can't bring it back to the, the parent object. It's like, it doesn't recognize what that is. Like it's there mm-hmm. in the flow. It, 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 like if we debug it, we, we can see it, but it's like, it's not wanting to come back and recognize, Oh, I am this kind of thing. Okay. Again, I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm probably not explaining mm. that very well. Well, this is a this is a, this is a definitely. I'm just going to try to see if I can get this super simple thing to work. So I'm going to set value, set value data, change value. No. Set object value. Uh, this might work. Object property. Let's try this. So change value pick is data pair list. I can't do that. I could, what if I loop it? Each. Okay, I'll then do this. Sorry, I'm just. Yeah, I know you're, you're having to make you having to make it up. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is just take this, build a f- string here, which will be, I am a string, and it'll take in the item index. I'm going to pass that into the value, which is single string. Set it. And then pass data pair list into our flow. And if we do this, if this runs right, we should get a pop up that has null data suck. So did you get any inputs in? Nothing came in. Okay, nothing came in. What did we pass in here? You input data. STR one, zero, and one. So maybe it's because the name isn't right. I have to figure out how to work with this. Oh my. Hmm. It's a data, it takes, it wants to list data pairs. We have a data pair list. I think the input names are right. Oh, crap. I just, I just blow my flow away. Joy. Uh, where's history at now? Am I an idiot? Where is the history folder at now? This is in which one? Okay, I did. I'm, I'm gonna save you. Save. Okay. Well, so yeah, man, I don't, I don't know what to do to get these in str one, str two. If I look at this one, those are what my input names are. Oh, hold on. Casing. It's different. That probably matters here. No one who watches this video is going to be able to track what's happening here. Okay, great. So we have an example that works. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I can call a flow by its ID. I can pass a data pair list into that flow. Um. So we could imagine that this is where your repeater object piece comes in. So let's 
talk through about where the error, where you're hitting the error at now that I've got an example that sort of right. works here. Sure. So on the, for the, for the data pair, I guess right now we just have that as a, as a primitive, as a string, right? Mm -hmm. So right. If, I, if I were to bring in something like a complex type, like, like the, like an account, like the account okay. object, right. Instead of the string, okay. and I wanted to okay. basically pass that into the start flow. I guess that's where we were Got going it. into. So I'm going to make a flow structure called dynamic test one and it's going to have str1 and str2 yeah yeah i got you i see what you're doing okay then i'm going to um i'm going to uh, da, 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 copy both of these i'm gonna copy flow one after i rename it so this is uh this is a primitive uh, call by data pair primitive example. And then I'm going to copy this. This will be call by data pair complex type example. And change the name of this to Runtime test one primitive. Okay, copy this, which will be runtime, runtime test two uh, complex. Okay, so I will edit my inputs here. I will find my type. Which we call input. And this is run something, run, run dynamic. Yeah, I thought it was dynamic that. test one, right? Yeah. It'll be a single. Okay, and then I'll fix my mappings here. So I'll do input string two, input string one. Okay. Now I'll come to call by data complex type example. I need to swap my flow out. So runtime complex get flow ID. I really don't know what I'm doing right now. So okay, there's the ID. Now I need a data pair list. So it's not actually a list. What it's going to be is I'm going to create a, so I don't need, I don't think I need any of this. I'm going to edit this and this is going to be, so this would be a data pair object. And this will be called dynamic test one. And then I, what I want is if I search pair, I should be able to get, create object data pairs. And I think I can bypass that loop behavior. So create object data pairs will take in, uh, I'll pass in the data pair object and the name oh, will be, uh, I don't know, uh, um, object to data pair list. And then what I'll do is pass in create object. I don't think that's right. What is that? Oops. This is okay. That's create object data pair one output. Create object data pair one output. Doesn't like that. Not valid. Why? It's a, oh, it wants a list of data pairs. Well, if I do build array pass the first one in does that make a difference runs nothing goes through if i look at my so what did i get out of here value null interesting oh well i also didn't declare anything here which is so string one would be 
hello world. That would prevent it from working. Nothing again, but if I look at this, I get str1, str2, hello world. And, and then flow ID data is name and object value. Is there a step that'll give me the data, what the data pair representation looks like for a flow? Integration, internal services, flow, execution service, get data pair inputs or something. Get description, get inputs. Get instructions for step. Flow design service. Flow edit service. Get data descriptions for step. But this requires us to initiate a flow session ID. Uh, Like a flow session ID description. Get data descriptions for step. I want to know what the input looks like here. Uh, but I have to start an edit session. Cancel flow edit. Get, get. Editing. Hmm. Runtime test to complex. Can I, how do I, I know I can view this in some way, I think. View as data pairs. Data pair to object. Create object. Object properties to data pairs. Takes it from, I think this is, let's try this step. I use the wrong one. Complex type. Ob object properties to data pair. Because this just takes in, yeah, this should just take in data pair object. And we'll pass in. Object properties, here it is, here it is. Yeah, 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 select from flow, object properties, data pair, I think. Okay, still nothing. So this passes in, this gave me the object as input, as individual inputs, but this flow wants, hmm. All right, yeah. Let, I'm gonna have to figure this one out for you, man. I don't know. Yeah, no I worries. I was just, I was just curious if, like, if if we could, I don't know, do it or explain through it quickly. But yeah, I mean, like I said, we already submitted a ticket for it, so I mean, it's not a, it's not a huge deal. Yeah, who's got this, Andrew? Let me. I'm gonna talk to him about this. Uh, yeah, and we we got on the phone with Andrew the other day, and I mean, mm -hmm. um, it. It was helpful. That was mainly around that cast object to type uh, mm -hmm. that, because we were trying to go that route in order to be able to debug it to see what was what was happening in not mm -hmm. the big main flow. Yeah, let me let me take this offline, uh, just like Janice's question, and get back to you, David. I'll go. Let me sync up with Andrew about this too and, and okay. figure this out. Yeah. Uh, I need to figure out how to look at, get what 
the data pair list for a, a flow input with a complex type as an input looks like. Right, right. I and once I get that, I think we can work backwards into how you can build up the data pair list in the right way to uh, to pass it in. Because that's yeah. the question, right? Like, yeah. what do we, like, how do we construct, how, like, how to find out what it looks like and then how to figure out how to construct something to take a list of primitives plus a, a complex type and turn it into the uh, the data pair the appropriate yeah. data pair yeah, format exactly. or whatever and, re and really a, like a, a list of those complex types is what is what we're trying to do right sure. because our uh let's say our our devs have a bunch of custom steps and stuff in there that basically huh. it, it 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 pings a service on our side to be able to get data from our database rather than going right. i guess the long way of doing it our, our devs just made a step in there to do it so right 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 uh, when we call that to represent all that stuff to the user in that uh in that ui of course they want the code and the name and all this other stuff right but so we just save it as a, a list of what they've selected as those complex objects and then are trying to say okay you know when i start my flow with data like bring in that list of complex types within that the i guess the object that we're trying to feed it the input parameter so to speak right exactly okay Leah, let me take this offline and, and sync back up with you and say i think i think i'm just missing one or two how to questions and i can get you an answer here i'll work with I'll, I'll work with andrew and, and reply in that thread for you sweet i appreciate it you bet have it help thanks for the question this is a tough one so right <laughs> uh okay awesome um that is it then Thanks, everyone. Uh, I have some follow-up for everyone, and uh, we'll reach out accordingly. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great afternoon. Bye. Yeah.